All right, welcome back to a, another pre-section video. Now we're in the last section of uh, chapter three. We skipped over section 3.6. We omit that from our syllabus. And we move on into the last section of chapter three, which is section 3.7, called Indeterminate Forms and L'Hopital's Rule. Now, L'Hopital's Rule, well, first off, indeterminate forms are the forms of our classic zero over zero and infinity over infinity. Those are our special ones. If you remember us when we started doing limits way back when in chapter one, those were our, uh, when we ever, anytime we took, took a limit and we got zero over zero, we were supposed to quote unquote do algebra. Well, this is really designed to help you out with that algebra. So if we have a limit of the form, a limit is a, x approaches a of f of x over g of x, where both f of x approaches zero and g of x approaches zero, then we have an indeterminate form of type zero divided by zero. And if we have the form as a limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, where both f of x goes to infinity and g of x goes to infinity, and it doesn't matter, it could be plus or minus, then we would have this uh, indeterminate form of uh, infinity over infinity. So, first thing is this, just what it means in the beginning here. Uh, just because it's zero over zero, now that's an indeterminate form. Indeterminate meaning we cannot tell what's going on. And so uh, they don't always cancel and you don't always get one. So for the most part, you don't get one. Occasionally you may, but for the most part, you're not gonna get one. Same idea with infinity over infinity. Infinity over infinity never equals one, okay? Uh, there may be a special case that I can create it making one, but for the most part, infinity over infinity doesn't cancel. Zero over zero doesn't cancel. You're not gonna get one. These are indeterminate forms of the L'Hopital rule type. We're gonna use L'Hopital's rule now when we have zero over zero and infinity over infinity. And what L'Hopital's rule tells us is this. Suppose that f of x and g of x are differentiable, meaning you can take a derivative of them. And most important, g, of x, g prime of x does not equal zero. And that when we take the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, we get either zero over zero or, like I said before, plus or minus infinity over infinity. Then we can do this. They both have the indeterminate form type of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. This right here is what I call L'Hopital's rule. Now, what does this really mean? This means this, that if I take the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, and I'm gonna get either zero over zero or infinity over infinity type of problem, I can just take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom and just read the limit. It's not the quotient rule. Quotient rule is derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top turn derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. It's what you wish the quotient rule was. Just take derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom and then redo the limit. So, here we go. Take the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x squared minus 8, divided by x minus 2. If I plug in 2 into this thing, I'm going to get 2 squared, which is 4, times 2 is 8, minus 8 is 0, divided by 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, in the old days, aka chapter 1, we would make you factor a 2 out, and then you got x squared minus 4, uh, x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 over uh, times x minus 2. Divided by x minus 2, the x minus 2 is cancel. You end up canceling it and then plugging in the number. That's the old days. But since I plugged it in and I got 0 over 0, I'm entitled to use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule is, you know, I'm going to take the limit as 2x approaches 2 of, and we'll take the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of 2x squared minus 8? That's going to give me 4x. Divided by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of x minus 2 is a 1. And just like with all problems, after I do my work, I replug in the number. This, the answer is going to end up being 4 times 2 divided by 1, or the limit is 8. So L'Hopital's rule is a very nice and quick way of taking the, uh, taking the limit of those special indeterminate forms of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. It only works with 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So let's see if we can do some more of these problems. Okay. There we go, problem number two here, got it lined up. Take the limit as x approaches zero of three x, uh, three times e to the x, uh, two x minus three over x. 
first rule of limits is plug in a number. So this would be equal to 3e to the 2 times 0 minus 3 over 0. Well, 2 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 minus 3 is 0 over 0. What a surprise. But it's L'Hopital's rule type in determinate form. So this would be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of... Remember, L'Hopital rule says you just take the derivative of the numerator, divide it by the derivative of the denominator, and redo your limit. The derivative of 3e to the 2x, with well, 3 is a constant, leave it alone, but e to the 2x. That's that e to the function from our last section. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but the derivative of e to a function is e to the function times the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2. The derivative of minus 3 is 0, divided by the derivative of the bottom. The root of x is 1. Drew the top over drew the bottom, L'Hopital's rule. So again, and I've always put L apostrophe H to let you guys know I'm applying L'Hopital rule. Drew the top over drew the bottom. Now I'm going to replug in my number. This will be 3 e to the 2 times 0 times 2, officially divided by 1. 2 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1 times 2 is 6. Divided by 1 is 6. The limit is 6. Look at the next example. Take the limit as x approaches 1 of 3 minus 3x divided by 5 times the natural log of x. First rule of limits, plug in a number. So this will be 3 minus 3 times 1 divided by 5 times the natural log of 1. Well, the natural log of 1 is 0, and 5 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. What a surprise. 0 divided by 0. So it's L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says this thing's going to be equal to the limit as x approaches, in this case, 1. I'll draw the top, I'll draw the bottom. Draw the 3 minus 3x is negative 3. Draw the bottom, 5 is a constant, leave it alone. Draw the natural log of x, rule from last section, is 1 over x. Now, still, classic limit, plug in the number. This will be negative 3 divided by 5 times 1 over 1. So when I clean it up, I get a solution of negative three-fifths. So both of these examples were zero over zero. Take root of the top or root of the bottom, classic L'Hopital rule. Well, even these two problems, these are a little bit different because we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity. So let's try this guy. Limit as x approaches infinity of x squared plus x plus three divided by two x squared plus five. First rule of limits is plug in infinity. Plug in the number, in this case is infinity. Infinity squared is infinity plus more infinity is bigger infinity plus 3 is even bigger. So it's infinity over infinity squared is infinity times 2 is still infinity plus 5 is infinity. So it's infinity over infinity. Well, again, either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity allows me to use the L'Hopital rule. So this will be the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x squared plus x plus 3 is 2x plus 1. The derivative of 2x squared plus 5 is 4x. But still, classic problem. After you take the derivative of top, derivative of bottom, L'Hopital's rule, plug in your number, plug in infinity. 2 times infinity is infinity, plus 1 is infinity, over 4 times infinity is infinity. Well, I get infinity over infinity again. Well, that's okay. Then you can do L'Hopital's rule again. You can do L'Hopital's rule as many times as you need until you get your numerical value for the limit. So I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule again. This is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the root of 2x plus 1 is 2. The root of 4x is a 4. There's no more stuff to plug in. And you get 2 divided by 4, which is equal to a half. And if you go back and remember, oh yeah, that's right. When you take the limit as x approaches these infinities, and the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. The answer was the ratio of leading coefficient as your 1 over 2. So I could have seen the answer even before we started. But I wanted you to see that you could use L'Hopital's rule twice and get the answer. So let's try this guy here. Take the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus 3 divided by the square root of x plus 1. First rule of limits is plug in a number. Infinity plus 3 is infinity over the square root of infinity, which is still infinity, plus 1 is infinity. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule, but before I do that, I'm going to clean him up. I don't do square roots, so this is x plus 3 divided by x to the 1 half plus 1. Now I'm going to apply 
L'Hopital rule, so this will be equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of drew the top, L'Hopital rule, take drew the top, over drew the bottom, and replug in your number. Okay, the derivative of x plus 3 is 1 over, the derivative of x to the half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, plus 1, derivative of 1 is 0. So I get this guy. Ah, but before you plug it in, clean him up. Always clean up your algebra before you take your limits. So this is 1 divided by 1 over 2 square roots of x. Negative exponent goes in the denominator, a half a power is the square root. But we're not done cleaning it up yet, because when you divide by a fraction, you invert and multiply, multiply by the reciprocal. So the limit as x approaches infinity of, invert and multiply, this will be 2 square root of x. When you invert and multiply, to 2 square root of x show up on top. Now, plug in your infinity. This is 2 times the square root of infinity. Square root of infinity is infinity times 2 is infinity. So, yes, we can still get an infinity answer with this stuff. However, what the rest of this chapter is going to be about after we teach you guys about the power of L'Hopital's rule and how important it is, is the other indeterminate forms. There are other indeterminate forms besides 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. All right, those other indeterminate forms are 0 times infinity. Is it 0? Is it infinity? What is it going to be? I don't know. It's going to be indeterminate. What about infinity minus infinity? Infinity minus infinity. Is it 0? Is it infinity? Is it negative infinity? Is it 45? I don't know. It's indeterminate. And infinity minus infinity, do they cancel out? Or maybe they don't. If this infinity is bigger than that infinity, they won't cancel out. So, what about 0 to the 0 power? 0 raised to the 0 power. Do you get 0? Do you get 1? I don't know. Infinity to the 0 power. Anything to 0 power is supposed to be 1, but infinity to the 0 power, is that going to be 1? I don't know. What about 1 to the infinity? Is that going to be 1? I don't know. It, it, it's indeterminate. You can't tell. So, zero over, uh, so this means, in most part, 0 times infinity is not always going to be 0. Infinity minus infinity may not be not equal to zero. Zero to the infinity is not zero. It's not going to be one. Infinity to the zero is not going to be one. And one to the infinity may or may not be one. So they're indeterminate. You can't tell what's going on with these things. So what this chapter is going to do for us and, and the, what your professor is going to do is for the uh, uh, rest of the remainder of this particular chapter, we're going to look at these other indeterminate forms and show you how to manipulate them to turn them into a L'Hopital rule type of indeterminate form so you can do L'Hopital's rule and manipulate the algebra. So there's a lot of algebra going to be done in this particular section. So that's what this whole focus is going to be on in terms of 3.2, but a very powerful and something you're going to use in Calculus 2 and Calculus 3 and so forth and so on, this concept of L'Hopital's rule. Hope this has been helpful.